Hello, and welcome to Mainer's Natter with RJ, a transcending imagined differences. My today's guest is a, a good friend of mine, a 16-year-old young man who I've known for over five years. So let me introduce you to uh, Serene Mbo right here. Uh, hello, viewers. My name is Serene. I'm 16, and I'm from a small city called South Point here in Maine. Mm -hmm. ah, so welcome to the show. There. Yeah, thanks for having me there here. So how have you been doing since you, uh, I last seen you? Uh, Quarantine, yes. staying inside, terrible online school, <laughs> doing nothing, uh, wearing masks, itchy nose, yeah. all just... It must be really hard for you to last. Oh, no, no, no. It's fantastic. <laughs> Everyone loves quarantine. I love the quarantine yeah. right there. Oh, oh, my word. So I, I wanted to uh, kind of speak a little bit about who you are and your history and, and uh, really how you've you came here. We are both uh, from uh, the UK, born and raised in the UK. I, of course, came over a, a little early and lived a lot longer. But uh, you came over uh, at seven uh, to uh, Maine with your mum. Would mm -hmm. you like to tell us a little bit about that? Transition? So um, I was seven years old when my mum told me that we would be coming to the United States to live closely to my grandparents. And uh, my Life in England wasn't anything out of the ordinary or, you know, bad or anything like that. It was pretty normal. I had friends. I had a nice school. I had a loving mother. I had two brothers who, two older brothers who annoy and tease me a lot and still do that today. Um, yeah, just pretty normal. Nothing crazy. I don't have any sort of, like lifelong, memorable, <laughs> crazy stories to tell. Mm. And that's not England's fault, or my memories, it's just that there was no sort of, there's no wow factor, really, so. Right, right. And it, and it was the, your early, first impressionable seven years. Yeah, I was seven, so like, seven, I didn't think much so. of it. Like, my initial response was, like, surprise, because mood of a different country is always, like, kind of surprising. Yeah. But I wasn't, like, shocked or upset, you know? Right, right. It was just like, all right. Yeah, and you're moving over. So, uh, uh, you moved over to the United States, emigrated, because now you're a US, uh, US citizen, uh, yep. as we are. Um, but it was, uh, you, and you moved to Maine, but it was a little rocky the first few yeah, years. Yeah, so wasn't it? when I first got to Maine, uh, I naturally, just like every other seven year old, I need a school to attend to. And so I started off with this one school. Um, that was very close to my grandparents' house because that was what was most convenient. Mm. And it was one of those like country club, rich boy, <laughs> advanced curricular schools <laughs> and where everyone's very smart, mm -hmm. which is not a bad thing, but for the way that my lifestyle is and the way that I want my lifestyle to be, mm -hmm. it didn't really fit in because my peers they were very like exclusive. Right. Like when you walk into the cafeteria, it's just like they're all in like their little their little circles. Right. It's like walking it's like walking through a field of sheep pens. Right. And they were also very competitive as well, mm. especially when it came to sports. Um, because I was on the baseball and football sorry, soccer <laughs> team. <laughs> and it was oh, uh, Very competitive, yeah, you were saying. Ex extremely competitive. Right. Like, they didn't want to compete because it was fun. They seemed to only want to compete just to win. Right. And, you know, these are like 10-year-olds we're talking about here. Right, right. It was extraordinary, really. Yeah. Like, yeah. And, just, and it was the same, uh, you know, how you are and what you were looking for, and especially coming from England, it was a stark difference to what you were used to, and it was very hard to kind of find your feet, wasn't there? Including not just in um, sports, but in education as well. Yeah, because like set up. the school was also that I also went to, you know, it was very advanced, you know, like my mindset was just like, this is so much <laughs> right. and like too complicated for me. Right. And there's no sort of way to just like not do it or not switch, you know, I try my best because that's kind of what it's all about. But like at this school, like trying your best just isn't enough. Right, right. And so falling behind in school, once again, like I said before, very competitive sports. So they're not fun. So I didn't want to partake in them. So I didn't have any sort of like fitness activity or right, place to go to. Right. And 
they were also, it's very judgmental. Like I was bad at baseball and instead of being encouraged and try to make me better at it, they just made fun of me and that just kills your self-esteem. It kills your confidence. And so in the end, for five, the first five years I was here in America, I was very upset, didn't want to be mm -hmm. here. It was just like, I just had no motivation, no inspiration, just, I just yeah. wasn't going anywhere. I noticed um, that's when I uh, uh, got to meet you and your mom and your family. And uh, uh, I have to admit, when I first met you, you were very despondent, very sad, um, and had no drive at all uh, in that initial piece there. Um, the challenge I think that I saw was was also not having finding your feet, not being able to find a, a friends that you could call your own and connecting, and just a different culture to how being a kid is from England to America, and particularly at this exclusive uh, school that you went to. Yeah, but it it was quite interestingly. Uh, that all changed in 2015, isn't that yeah, right? Yeah, so 2015 was kind of like the big, like, transformation year for me. Mm. And it was not just because we, uh, I moved to South Pole, and it was really started with the summer of that year. Right. Uh, my grandparents, who are very loving and supportive, mm -hmm. um, wanted me to go to a kind of like overnight cabin, like all guys kind of like camp for two weeks. Right. And just, and just to interject, it wasn't just overnight, it was two weeks yeah, that they wanted to stay. Weeks. So it was the first time that you've been away, especially in this country, away from family and everyone to live with these supposedly strangers yeah. uh, to work right there. So that, that was very anxiety provoking for you. Uh, you're not quite sure if you wanted to do it, but you, you said, okay, I was going to do that. And you, you put your best foot forward when you were going to Yeah, so they gave me this like list of like 200 camps. <laughs> and being the lazy 11 year old that I was, I was after like the first like 10 I looked at, I was bored. I was like, you know what, the next one that sounds good, I'll just go to it. Right. And so that camp that I chose was one that was called uh, Camp Mytina, located in uh, Alton, New Hampshire. Right. And I, I looked at it, it's like, it sounded good. I was like, all right, that's the one, let's go. Right. And so, and so that, that camp was the Y, it was yeah. part of the Y system as well. Yeah. So yes, go ahead. Which once was the YMCA. Right, right. Yeah. So I, I have to say that... Uh, both dropping you off and picking you up um, with your family, it was you were transformed. The second week that we saw you when we came to pick you up, you were a new person. Yeah. Uh, what we noticed in that space of time of of being with those kids and those camp counselors was the ability to believe in yourself. You were given self-confidence, you were very passionate, uh, you had a sense of who you were, at least initially for an 11-year-old, um, and then hope for the future. Yeah, because so when I point. went to my Tina for those two weeks, like, it, I had so much fun. It was like the most fun, like the first time I genuinely had so much fun in America. Mm. And it really made me forget about my problems right. for two weeks and just mm. made me focus on having a good time right. and being around people who are very welcoming and also there just to have a good time. So it kind of like reignited this spark of just wanting to have fun, especially when you're in your childhood, which right. doesn't last for that long. Right, very true, very true. So like, yeah, when I left, like I was just, my mom looked absolutely blown away. It's like, <laughs> is this the same kid I dropped right, off? Right, right. And yeah, and it just provided like a sense of hope that things could get better yeah. and that's when I went to uh, a new school in when South you came Portland back in the cause, fall. yeah because that was the city that we had moved to I'm still in Maine still close to my grandparents so I went to this middle school called Mahoney mm -hmm. and uh, I was you know it's a different school so you know you're a little nervous yeah absolutely but I was hoping uh, but I had a little bit of hope I was like hmm I wonder if when I go there and walk through the hallways. I wonder if someone will actually say something, will actually give a greeting of right. sorts. And it was just so much better because while the first school I went to was very um, advanced, this school was a lot um, relaxed, I should say, mm. or like calmer, where like... Accepting. Yeah, accepting as accepting. well. The, yeah. like, like the people there 
you know, they didn't, they were just trying to enjoy, they were mm. like, they were trying to enjoy the moment, like having fun now, because right. now is what matters most, right. right? So they were trying to have fun. The schoolwork wasn't also advanced as well. So like, it was easier for me to do better in school because right. like the level wasn't so high. Right. Yeah. It sounded like, um, from my end, that you found a school system that really kind of catered for where you were at and, and then built you up at a level and at a pace that kind of worked for you. Yeah. Because your, your, your academics excelled, like almost in the first year from going to that school, that your academics, your sporting and your social, those three areas, just exploded. You know, um, and what I, what we, you know, your mother and I really noticed was your your academic ability was just slowly going up. You plateaued, and then you continued to peak, peak or grow in that way. So showed us that you were learning, and that the right environment really worked for you. So that really was probably your first integration yeah. into Maine, you know, and Mainers. Yeah, and also my peers there were also more my caliber, you right, know? right. much more relaxed, much more like, just like, let's have fun, much more like understanding. Yeah. Like I could actually like relate to these people right. and really connect with them. So, you know, I had tons more friends than I did at the first school that I went to. Yeah, Karen talking, yeah, I know, yeah. So that was br brilliant. So I, um, that first, that first kind of uh, year at, at that, at that school, Mahoney, you also, whilst you were also finding friends and, and feeling included, um, and there's a whole mix of kids right there, but just wonderful kids that you worked with, you also joined a, a, a organization that the school puts on called JMG. Firstly, what yeah. does that stand for? And So you know, in seventh grade, I was asked to be a part of this like uh, student led or uh, yeah student led like leadership like mm. program called uh, Jobs for Men's Graduates or uh, JMG, and uh, JMG's mission uh, it's up here, but JMG's mission is to identify students who face kind of like educational barriers mm. or students who have potential leadership skills and basically. Um, help each one kind of bring those like abilities out to like their right. fullest yeah. by giving them uh, challenges, uh, lots of fundraising type deals with nonprofits. Uh, we also had lots of guest speakers in that class right. that would come talk to us. And uh, that's just like one piece of it. The other piece of it is that uh, JMG really gives you like a step in when it comes to dealing with many like real world scenarios. Right, yeah, that's what because I noticed. Because school doesn't really teach you like how to get a job. Right, right, right. It teaches, it's supposed to, it teaches the skills of that job, but it doesn't really teach you like how to get right. it. Yeah. But Jamie teaches you all about resumes, applications, dressing professionally, mm -hmm. actually like presentation. It teaches you all those skills, right, right. which so it really, even if someone can have like A's and A's and A's, but you having like those types of skills right. will make you somewhat more successful yeah. than that person. So. Yeah, yeah. I, I remember that uh, at, at Mahoney when you were with JMG, that you would be doing public speaking on different fundraisers. You also, one story you were telling me about, um, and I think I was there as well, where you had to talk to uh, Bank executives yeah, so for funding. What was that? Bank of America. This was, I think, in high school because mm -hmm. JMG is not only in middle school but also in high school right. and even in some colleges now. But uh, Bank of America wanted to know about JMG to see if they would want to invest in it. Right. So they came to South Point High School and I was asked to do a presentation for them explaining about what JMG is and all of that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, so we had to do lots of prep for it. And uh, it just went off so easily because JMG really helps you nail public speaking because for some people it's not that easy. Yes, yeah, yeah. Uh, and again, I've got to say, uh, when we first met, you weren't a public speaker. No. You were very, uh, uh, very aloof, um, very quiet, um, and hard to give eye contact and things like that. And amazingly, uh, pushed out in front into an audience. Many of it was live, 
You yeah, it's to, live. It's live. You had Not to like this. Before. Yeah, exactly. So that was fantastic that how they taught you that. They also taught you about collaborations, about different organizations that are around Maine, also, and how you interact uh, with universities, them. Universities, they do college oh, tours as well. So they give, you, they give you, they just give you so much advantages. Right, right, right. Yeah. And broaden your skill set from there. So that, that um, I also noticed another move over to your middle school and subsequently to high school um, has been a, a pillar of your your uh, learning and growth through that as well, wouldn't you say? So what do you think, just on, with JMG, that you've learnt through this time? Jeez, that's a long <laughs> list. I know, it is the most prominent then, how about that? The most... I'd say probably <laughs> the best and most important things I've learned from JMG is probably the system of getting a job. So basically applying for it, writing a resume, going to the actual interview. So I think that's a big part of it. Right. Another big part of it is that public speaking part. It just makes you feel so much confident. Literally, nowadays, whenever I do speeches, all I got to do is just deep breath. I go out there and I knock them dead. Right, right, right. Exactly. And just like that. Those are probably the two biggest things. The th right. Another thing is probably like um, talking to... Uh, businessmen, right. and adults who are very intimidating. <coughs> you. <laughs> <laughs> very funny. Thank you. Thank you. But you you learn how to advocate for yourself, how to speak for a cause. Yeah, and communicate uh, and with communicate. that kind of like older uh, generation. Right, right. Yeah, exactly. What I also, uh, a piece that your mother and I was always discussing was um, about uh, your socialization, the, your ability to find friends and to feel like you're part of Maine. And uh, again, not just JMG, but that was a big chunk of that. Um, your friendship circles, good friends started to kind of expand and, and you would have them in your life a lot more. So, so you really were getting to learn about what it is to be a Mainer, wasn't you, in that time? Yeah. yeah. Very good, very good there. So... Um, um, we, we just passed the uh, 15, the halfway mark just there, so, so we're doing quite well. But I wanted to continue our conversation from um, JMG to um, a little bit about your passions. So uh, equally, you like with your mother uh, to go camping and outdoors. More her, because, uh, <laughs> more her. Uh, as a kid, you only go because you don't have anywhere else to go. <laughs> That's right. And uh, I don't like tents. <laughs> I don't like tents. You don't like tents. Cabins you like, but not tents. Yes, because I've made a rule for myself, and that is that I will never, ever complain about the quality of a hotel. <laughs> as long as I go there and I don't have to actually build it. Right, right, right. It's fine. It's fine that way. But uh, yes, I, but I do like being outside. I do like being outside. So that was good as well, I have to admit. But part, uh, equally, part of that uh, love of outdoors, maybe not tents, but cabins or uh, 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 electric run buildings, but equally what you found was that you, you got a passion for photography. Um, and what you're seeing right now, just on the, uh, on the screen right now, is just a few of your pieces, a few of your uh, photography pieces that you've taken uh, throughout the years. And it's only a small selection, um, which, again, I want to just talk about why photography and, and the locations that you picked. You... Um, so, yeah, um, in 2018, finally got a smartphone. <laughs> right. And I took a photo with it, and I was like, that actually looks really good, because mm. before I didn't have a good camera at all. Mm -hmm. um, so I was like, I finally have these, I, f I finally have a good camera on me. And so I just started just taking photos. Normally it was just, just because. Right, right. And then I realized that, you know, some of these actually look pretty good. Right, right. Uh, got a, one here. That was taken actually while camping, but you've got like the island, you've got like the fog in the background, you've got kind of like the low kind of water sort of angle. Yeah, yeah. But also I, like the photos, like they help me remember days. Mm. Like, uh, you know, that helps you remember, like that camping trip that I went on. So right. it helps you remember stuff. It, I like the way they look, because that looks fantastic. Right, right, yeah, very much so. And I have to say, some of your pieces uh, that you've um, taken pictures of are absolutely beautiful. Um, 
Um, they are mainly pictures of, of Maine and New Hampshire. Um, uh, summertime camping, but some winter as well. I don't know if we're going to have any of those up. Yeah, that was taken in February, I in believe. In February, was yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. Um, and really showing some of the landscapes and beauty of, of both those states um, throughout the different times of and seasons and times of year. Um, so you really show a real beauty and a real um, uh, wonder of why we like Maine, really. Um, and, and you seem to have grabbed that as well. Um, so, you know, I noticed it's landscapes. So why landscapes? Um, because they're, because they're easy. They mm -hmm. don't talk back. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. Uh, and you got yeah the lighting. They, they just seem convenient. Yeah. Ever I I walk around South Portland a lot, yeah. and now I drive around South Portland a lot, <laughs> and so you know if I ever see something like that looks picture worthy, right. I just take a picture of it real quick, and right. they just yeah. they just seem to work, and I think honestly it's just because they're convenient and just like there's. They're there in the moment. Right, right, and doing those. And I noticed also with your photography, because you've been doing it probably two years. Two years now. And altogether, how many photos have you taken, would you say? Guessing? Uh, let's just say my iCloud storage is full. <laughs> to say the least. And they're all mostly photos. So, so there's a, a tremendous amount that you have. Um, you've also given calendars and you know uh, printed the pictures out and made calendars and the gifts for your family yeah so uh my grandparents really like the photos that i take so i just picked out like 12 right. made a calendar of it for them and they absolutely love it yeah, so yeah. That, i found a use for them right right so that's yeah. one thing that i do with them yeah yeah so i, I you know uh, wonderful wonderful photography and i wanted to just to uh, highlights some of the places that you've been as well, from uh, Moosehead Lake to uh, Millinocket area, um, height of land uh, that you see in this picture right here. But, but also that um, with these photos, it's, 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 you're forming a memory for yourself of, of good times right here and, and, and as, an, as a Mainer, as a new Mainer as well. So let me... I wanted to, to kind of move on a little bit and just talk of just Jumped about years. Yeah, so about, you know, now and where you're at and and what's your passions and you know, what do you think? What do you think of I'd Maine? I'd say now pretty annoyed. <laughs> pretty uh, not uh, I'm hopeful. Yeah. But quarantine has really slowed things down. Right, 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 right. Uh, like right now I'm really just hoping that so they'll find a better system for school to combine sort of like in-person learning so you actually learn something right while online because long distance it has that safety kind of factor in it uh so that's one so thing i'm hoping for another thing is i'm hoping that you know things can open up hopefully uh i predict maybe by like january or probably early next year, we'll finally have some way to fight COVID back. Right, right, right. So maybe things will be able to go back to normal. Mm. But right now, I'm just like just so. trying to make the most out of like this summer. I've mostly been trying to make the most out of it. Right, right. And let me, I'm going to throw out a question to you that we didn't necessarily start with, but I wanted to start to do that. Um, and your time here, how has it felt being a a young black man being here in Maine. Yeah, and it's, your experience will be very different to mine, but it's a, I wanted to talk about culture and, and what that means and how that has represented itself for you. And I'm staring you a little bit, but I, what I notice is, is at school, um, at uh, the Y as well, um, and these places that you've, felt like a part of a system rather than excluded from. Um, and I wanted to kind of highlight that as this yeah, new generation. So, I mean, South Point High School is very diverse. Right. We have lots of like uh, foreign students from uh, mm -hmm. south from like Mexico. We have a couple from Spain wow. who speak different languages and don't know any English. <laughs> wow, right, right. Which means watching people constantly is like, do you understand <laughs> me? And I have to be like, he speaks Spanish, not, not idiot. Right, 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 exactly. And it's like that. So it's 
very diverse school, which is okay. Um, everyone's very accepting because I feel like um, people are finally starting to wake up to mm -hmm. kind of like uh, racial kind of oppression and all that sort of things. It's never been some, this, I've never faced a problem because of right. anything like that. Uh, but I don't think I ever will because, I don't know, things just seem to be getting better because right. the overall culture of like South Portland, it feels, it feels very 90s type feel. <laughs> Uh, 90s. What do you mean by that? So, like, you know, everyone is just, uh, everyone's just cool. <laughs> right, right, right. I suppose, just to add that, it's interesting because that's what progressiveness is. Just to put out a little bit of a, a, a buzzword, that um, even for myself to you, the difference of acceptance and the difference of inclusion for you is much more prolific. You, you go, once you found the right place, the school that you went to, you became integrated and you, be, you felt like you're part of. And that allowed you to really excel uh, in whatever that you chose to do, to be better at, to grow with that. I also noticed that your friends are a real mixed bag of people. It, yeah. it doesn't matter who, where, who, what. It, it's all about how you both get on and have same ideologies and same kind of fun things that you like to do as well as the studying because you all will help one another with that as well. And, and, that's a, and I, I suspect that's really that's the reason why we're fighting is because of people like you and your friends to be able to have that life that you have there, you know. So, so um, I'm uh, just to uh, uh, wrap up just a little bit now as we're just coming down to the close. Uh, firstly, I want to uh, say thank you, Serene. Um, it was a absolute pleasure to be able to talk with you. I mm -hmm. hope that you felt that it was uh, fun as well and enjoyed this. It was okay. <laughs> uh, 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 I have great uh, respect and pride for uh, you. Uh, I've seen you grow and I've seen you change. And uh, you give people like me uh, hope that the world will be better. And, I'm, and I absolutely mean that. It's the reason why I've stuck with you for so long. Thank so, you. Yes. So um, what I want to do is just wrap up right now. So thank you very much, people, for um, uh, sitting in, and listening to the show. This was uh, Serene Mbo, who is a close friend of mine and his family. Um, he's been uh, working really well to be part, be part of the new Mainers. Uh, being a citizen, interacting with the school, and finding his own feet. So thank you for joining me, and I hope to see you at the next uh, show.